I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Second. Motion to 
second. That change was sales tax that was on one bill that we missed and we took the sales tax off. Any discussion or questions on the current claims? Yeah, I got a question. Page two, uh, we bought four more tasers. Um, I, and uh, on the front page there were some holsters. I guess I'm kind of curious why we keep buying these tasers and holsters if we're not going to put a training session on and actually use them. Why, why do we keep buying more? The uh, instructor has been contacted. I think he's out of Sturgis. And uh, as soon as Bob gives the go ahead or he has the time or whatever, I'm not sure which, what's the hold up on it, but it's all in place, ready to go as soon as he gets down here to do the training. I think it's just a scheduling thing at this point. The policy is in place for the taser use. Okay, I guess a little further down on the page, there's a Conrad Big C signs for $8,700. Can you explain this? That's the entrance signs. And this is just half, is that correct? Yes. This does not include any labor or anything else. Correct. So you want to tell these people what the grand total of your uh, entrance signs to Hot Springs are going to be? It was close to thirty thousand. Thirty thousand dollars for three signs. Right. The, the bid board is paid for half of that, which is your two dollar a night room tax that's on all of the motel rooms. Uh, So it's only going to cost 30, 15? Of the total of 30, yeah. 15 bid. And then you authorize an additional 10 at your budget meeting or one of the other meetings here not that long ago to go towards the entrance signs to complete three of them instead of two of them with the way the bids came in for the building of the sign and then the installation by uh, by uh, or 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 board. Board. Yep. Any other questions or discussion on the uh, bills? A motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. No. And communication from the public. We've got somebody on the agenda. Is it Andy? Is that right? She did not show up. Okay. Um, on, I think it's Main Street that runs next to Golden West and National. The one with yeah. the trees growing up the sidewalk? No. Yeah, there are. And that's not what I'm talking no. about. <laughs> that street, though. Oh, okay. Um, the other day, Wise and the one day, once when I was going out of the parking lot, the one side when I turned off of North River, Onto National, there were two cars that did not, there's no stop sign there. And they just come barreling around that building and not even stopping. Right at the corner, right by the telephone company. Right. But I was surprised that it happened twice in the same day. And so I looked for a stop sign and I noticed there was change it, but I can remind Bob to kind of watch that corner a little bit. Seems like whatever happens never happens when the police are there. <laughs> Imagine that. Yep. <laughs> Any other communication from the public? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm Linda Barbell and I'm personal representative of the estate of Alfred E. Hatch and I wanted to give the council an update of what has uh, happened up there on the property <coughs> since the first of the year. And um, my uncle Benny Hatch and I, we've been able to remove all the vehicles from that property. And we attempted to have a dumpster located up there for um, gathering up the rest of the garbage. And we ran into a roadblock there with the person that is inhabiting that uh, space. 
and um, over the summer we've had various legal actions and all this and and I just wanted the council to know that we are still interested in completing that project. Okay. If you would like to take it under consideration. Okay. Yeah, we're also in a hurry to get it get it finalized. So. Yeah, well we are too, yep. you know, and with the bad weather coming up and stuff and, and um, you know, we're just hoping that you would take it into consideration. Okay. All right. So how long does it think it'll take the city to go forth with this? The city? Well, with us getting a... Um, I'm not sure. Um, I uh, would say anywhere between 14 and 30 days. I was asking Carol. Oh, Carol. <laughs> Our attorney. <laughs> We're going to do it as quickly as we can. <laughs> Just might be December, November, sooner? As soon as we can, Greg. Well, just what, why do we keep jerking these people around? I don't, I don't understand that. I don't think we're jerking the people yeah, around. Yeah, we are. Girl. I think Hatch is jerking the people around. We had a court order, if I remember we right, do have a court order. that right. we can go tear it down. That's right. As of November first or fourth today. No. I wrote him a letter asking him if he would like to take out his things that we were going to start on that process this week. That's right. What are we going to do next? If you want to go into detail about it, let's do an executive session. Okay. Okay. That, that would be that would be easier than here, I think. Okay. Oh wait. Sorry. Thanks, Greg. Any other communications from the public? Hey. Uh, we've got a 715 hearing. I'll come back to that pretty soon. Got our first reading of an ordinance number 1138, and that would create a capital improvement project uh, fund. And what that will be used for is any funds in the future of the city where we have funds that we might keep for a project. Right now, we've got some cash for the water park or the splash park that Kim has been collecting for up in Butler Park. And this would be a fund that we would set up that would be ongoing and it could have any number of different projects in there. But this is something we have to set up by ordinance in order to have the fund available. So I would, there's a, there's a state law that says that we have to have the reading of the first ordinance and then we have a reading of the second ordinance and they say that you don't have to vote on the first ordinance reading. We have always voted on that and I think what I'd like to do is have a vote to bring this back to a second reading at our next meeting. That would be basically passing it. So moved. Second. The motion and the second. Discussion questions? And it's not actually an ordinance reading, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. And the Resolution we've got for the weight scale for the plunge janitors. We're having trouble down there keeping our janitors. We are not paying them for the full three hours of the $20 per hour like we had done in the first part of the summer like Evan Sponge was doing when the other owners had it. We can't keep people at 10 and a quarter an hour. And I don't know what we need to do about wages down there. Maybe we need to try to contract it out. I don't know. If anybody has ideas, I'm open to any suggestions because the tenant quarter isn't, isn't enough to keep the people cleaning to continue cleaning. Uh, maybe there's others, but Emily hasn't found anybody yet. Why don't we talk to the people that's like cleaning the force now? Like you know, those those kids that clean the library or the lady that cleans? This is a little bit different type. I don't know if library, I don't know if they'll go down there after hours. I think they'll be cleaning. They, they were cleaning anyway down there. Upstairs is all they But it wasn't like after eight or nine at night, was it? It wasn't. Didn't we discuss this during budget? 
Well, it was only supposed to be starting at so much of the wage, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't 1025. No, we couldn't get the people to say 820, so we're going to try 1025, and we haven't done it at 1025 either. We can keep looking, but right now we don't have a solution for what to do with our cleaning <coughs> question. Well, the reason, the reason they quit now is because they wanted just three, three hours pay, whether they work 15 minutes or three hours. That ain't right. We're not doing that. I know we're not. I said that's one of the reasons why they quit. What happened to all your volunteers that were lining up to do all this stuff? Didn't we just hire a guy? Did he quit too? Yes. He's a volunteer and we hired him. I thought these volunteers were going to work for nothing for the plumbing. I did too. That's what we were told. You had all these people wanted to volunteer. We have a volunteer we hired and he quit? We'll continue to look, but right now Emily's cleaning down there quite a bit because she can't find it. I thought else. she said, told you that day she wouldn't clean. Emily? That's what she said in your office that day. She said she doesn't want to, but she knows she has to. Well, since she told me Saturday morning. Well, Saturday, but that day in your office, when I was standing there, she said she was cleaning. Well, that's not true. Yeah, it is. It's true that she might have said it, but it's not true that she won't. Oh, I don't okay. Think well, is this is this a, a janitor position? Yeah. It's Wait, no, just a minute. Oh, let me it's all the cleaning and the locker no. rooms and no. Is it does this pertain to just cleaning like showers and shower rooms and stuff like that, or is this a janitor for cleaning the whole place? No, it's in the showers. So this is just a janitor for cleaning the showers after all. Right. Uh, so so then we could actually. With this hourly wage here, we could hire a guy to come in there during the day and, and vacuum the weight rooms and oh yeah, that part of right now is not a problem. It's just a lot of things. I was trying to figure out what were janitors and what was cleaning personnel and where one started and the other one stopped no, going. It's just a lot I've of things. I've been there and done that. I don't know. I think we still need to doing something different as part of their jobs. Those things right there are probably... So do we have a job description? We start, we start laborers that work out in heat all day long at $8 an hour. We can't get somebody to clean showers for 10 yeah. Emily right now is saying she can't find them, but we will continue to look. Yeah, I think. Do we have a job description? Just for the two girls right now, that was something that came with them. So, yeah, we, we're going to have to work on that. No. Okay. Why don't we talk to a couple of guys who are just laying off for the winter and see if they're interested in doing this? We're going to have to continue to look at it. We're just going <coughs> to update it right now. We don't have to clean it. Volunteers never tell me I see a volunteer sheet. There's no one signing up. So. Well, then they're not the volunteers. Not all the volunteers are being called. Well, there's a sheet for you there to sign up on. It, so. How many hours a week do we need a janitor? Just a couple hours a day. It's probably between an hour and two and a half hours every day, every night after the plan closes. Some special services. They won't work after hours. Well, the special services is cleaning the rest of the building during the day, but they won't clean after hours. I will. I'm only part time with the city. I would be interested in the extra hours. There we go, bud. And I can do it at night after I close here. Every night, I don't have a problem with that. Do you want me to come down to City Hall tomorrow? Yeah, or call me first because I've got a busy day. So. Okay. okay. That's not a problem. All right. Thank you.
Can I get an approval on the resolution so we have a wait to, a wait to start people on? This would be at the time of court. I'll make that. I'll second it. Got a motion to second discussion on the resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. No. Okay, now it's 715 and we've got a Beverage license application for the Boys and Girls Club at the Wine and Grease event now here at the Mueller Center for November 16th. This is a public hearing. If anybody wants to be heard, this is the time. take this off these licenses or, or something if we're not going to... No, we can go by our license. We need to keep that regulation there for the license applicants that are not a current holder of an existing uh, well, liquor then, license. Then they need to read this prior to getting the application turned in. They're aware that they need it. It's the same group that's working for the six celebrations next summer to do like the summer nights and in Rapid City and whatever Spearfish is doing up there on Friday nights. And, uh, the, the Boys and Girls Club would like to do that event in June, July, and August next year. I know that early. They're working on it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this says that it's supposed to be with this prior to us approving it. Like it's supposed to be. 
So if they don't have it, we will, we will encourage them not to apply for something like this. Because really, okay. Or we just vote it down. Until they well, get it. These guys have to show this before they can have this event, right? Yep. Okay. That's what that motion says. Yep. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Personnel, we've got uh, we've got most of the stuff right there on the on the agenda. You can read that for yourself. And we did not have time to get it on this agenda. Bob wants to hire a police officer. He's interviewed with Curtis Smith, and it is not on this agenda. He'd like to offer him a job to start before we would. It may not. He may not start before the next one. He's going to have to give notice. So unless there's a problem with anybody, I'm going to tell Bob to go ahead and offer him the job. And we'll have it on the next agenda. If you have a problem with it, let me know. Otherwise, he's probably going to offer the job. He's going to give notice. How many people got interviewed? Two or three? Are we? Yes. Who are they? I don't have their names with me here, but there were three of them. I got a problem with this because I don't think you should be adding that to the agenda without proper notice. Right. And I did not add it to the agenda. I'm saying that it will be on the next agenda. If anybody has a, a problem, let me know because otherwise Bob's going to offer him the job before it's been approved. Is he certified? He's not certified. And I understand there's two certified police officers that apply for this job? I believe that's right. And we're going to hire somebody and send them to school, even though two certified officers apply for this. Have a problem with it. After re re review of references, it's the re recommendation of the chief of police to not hire either one of the two certified officers. After contacting previous employers. Everything else on the personnel is on the agenda. You can read that. I don't have to read it to you for you. On the glider hanger bid that we accepted at the last meeting, there were some problems with one of the two of the bids. Actually, we didn't get all the information. We'd like to rescind the acceptance of the award of the bid, and then we will be rebidding the glider hanger as it was before. I'll make a motion we do that. A motion and a second. Second. Discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. New business, the Lower <coughs> Falls Paving District. Mary Sue? It will be Grace Holman who speaks. She's the president. Oh, okay. All right, Liz. Hi. I'm Liz Holman, and as Mary Sue said, I'm the president of the Boulder Falls oh, Property Owners Association. Thank you for putting us on your agenda. We appreciate the opportunity to come and visit with you. Start with, I have my humble hand um, petitions from the majority of the property owners in Boulder Falls to try to get a paving district formed. And the, we'd also like to talk about our vision for the Boulder Falls community and for the community of Hot Springs. Um, I don't know most of people on the city council. My husband and I moved here in 1993. We came from Denver and we brought our business with us. Um, we have we lived in the, in Fall River County and then in 2009 we moved out to the Boulder Falls subdivision. So now we're part of, of the city. In the years that we've been here, we've had three friends from out of state buy property in this community. We had a friend from Denver come and buy two lots in on the golf course in Boulder Falls and has built probably a half a million dollar house on it. We have another friend that's currently negotiating for two lots on the golf course. And we have another, and he's from Nebraska. And we have another friend from Denver that's looking at buying property in the community, horse property. Now, I'd like to take credit for this, but the truth is my husband and I aren't nearly that charming. They're moving here because they love the community. They love the scenery. They love the pace. They, they thoroughly enjoy getting up on Saturday morning, going down to the basement for coffee. They like going to Woolies on Saturday night for dinner. They go to the library, they golf, they use Evans Plunge. They really enjoy being here. And we know that Hot Springs has kind of been uphill and against the wind for a while. 
We had the 2009 recession that didn't just hit Hot Springs, it hit the whole United States. Then we find out that our VA has a really strong chance of closing. Meanwhile, we've got a beautiful hospital, a breaking ground for a great nursing home. And we believe, we all have a vision for the golf course community. And we think that it plays an enormous part of the economic development for Hot Springs. We think that one of the major industries for Hot Springs can be retirees. It's already started. When I looked the research before I came to visit with you, I took a look at the tax rolls for the Boulder Falls um, <coughs> homeowners association for the community. And there's a few owners that own property around the golf course that are from Hot Springs. But there's very few of us. The vast majority of the owners of the property around the golf course, they came from other parts of South Dakota, or they came from California, or Georgia, or North Carolina, or North Dakota, or Colorado. They came here not to get a job, not to take from the community. They came here because this would be a great place to live, in their eyes, evidently. They thought it, was a, they, it had enough appeal to them that they paid real money for lots out there. Maybe they thought they were going to live there. Maybe they thought that it, they could see the attraction and other people would come and they'd be able to sell their lots at a profit. Maybe they have built homes and they are living here. I mean, it, it's not just a vision we have, it's happening. But to continue with it, we strongly feel that we need to get the roads paid. Last winter, I had a friend visiting from North Dakota. We, we like those North Dakota friends because <laughs> they have a great potential to move to this area. We, they're seeing it now in the northern part of the hills. I, we have no doubt that we're going to see it down here. And my friend said, he's in the oil business, he said, ma'am, I like where you live, but these roads, it's like the wheels fell off the wagon. We'd like to get those wheels back on the wagon. You know, we'd like to drive that wagon into the future. We're looking at, as, as a homeowners association, as we speak, we're, we're putting together a website to promote the area and to promote the, the golf course. We're looking at obtaining property so that in the future, when the place gets a little bit more built up and we have more people here, that we have a clubhouse, we can offer amenities to the people that have come here for their second homes or their summer homes or whatever it would be at their retirement homes. Much is the same as any retirement community in, in Arizona or California or Florida would offer them. Retirees are they are a great industry. I mean, a lot of them bring their money with them. They're not getting jobs in the community. They're giving to the community. They're buying, building homes. They're buying groceries. They're eating out. They're using our medical facilities. They're paying taxes. They're golfing, they're swimming. They're using the library. They're not taking a lot from the community. Very few of us have children. Very few of us have cause the council to have to hire more policemen. You know, we're probably we're pretty easy going. We're kind of laid back. And um, what I'm saying is, is that we've seen it. We've all bought homes or bought lots out there because we see the magic. We're not doing it because we want jobs in this community. We just want to live here. We want to be part of the community. It's not us against you. We're all one. And as the other retirees come, other people come that are wanting out of North Dakota because of the hubbub, my friends from Denver just think this is the best place because there's no traffic. I think, you know, I'd like to be able to go to a Cineplex and see eight or ten different movies. They say, oh, that's way overrated. Do you know how nice it is to walk out in the morning and see the deer on the greens? You know, we have a jewel here. We want to take it forward. We want to form a partnership with the, with the city, and we, we want to see that happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Liz. And you've had petitions? Now, on these petitions, what percent of the total? Uh, Mr. Mayor, but we have, we have uh, 71 lot owners out of 121 lot lots in the entire subdivision. Okay. So we currently have 55.4%, but there are more coming in. That's what we have in here as we see. <coughs> but there will be more coming in. Okay. As they come in, I'd love to have them too, or, or copies of them, so okay. we know where the, where the count goes. Very good. Very okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Mr. Ryan 
Department accepted bids from uh, Nelson Oil and Gas for 8,000 gallons of gasoline and also 8,000 gallons of diesel at 297 and a half a gallon and 332 a gallon. That's in our minutes, so we can buy off those bids. Water fill station, I think this is about the location. Is this yours, Dwight? Oh, we've kicked this around a lot. Public Works of where to put the new water fill station. Several different areas we talked about. And some on the council want to put it over here with the sewer dump station. Uh, personally, I myself, I'm not in favor of that. Uh, I thought it was something we should kick around as a council and see if we can come up with a consensus on where we want it to. Okay. The areas talked about are leaving it where it is now and upgrading the facility. An area at the top of University by the Senex bulk plant was talked about. An area across from Ricks, uh, an area by the county courthouse, and an area over here with the sewer dump station. Okay, so Ricks Auto. There used to be a water dump station here. No, by the wastewater plant. Oh yeah, by the wastewater plant. I think the one up on the bypass that we talked about would be an ideal place. <coughs> on Steve's property, right before you go down into the landfill on the left there, that little piece of property above the derby track. Oh. Easy access, pull off, fill up, get back on there. Hmm? Where the car lot is at now? Well, it's, it'd be to the west of that car lot, which is closer to the road going down the hill. Right? I did not look at that. From the car lot to the road going down in, I don't know how big that is. Do you know, Steve? Probably. I don't even know if he's willing to get rid of the property. That'd be ideal for Well, that piece of property? Okay. <laughs> I think it's like, uh, it's over an acre. Is it? Is that fairly point? flat? That Pardon? Is most of that acre fairly flat? It's the one you're using. I've been donating for the derby. Part of the park on? It's up on top. It's pretty much level. It's, it's, it goes all the way to that big rock wall that I built. That's right on the lot. Okay. I, I have a question about that. If, if the city obtains something for their water fill station that is not paid, will the city be required to pave it? Yeah. We're going to have to follow our words as far as egress and getting in and out and the normal water fill itself. We'll have to do something, at least a French drain, if we're going to hook up the sewer. Up there, we can, I don't know if we hook up the sewer there or put in a French drain. I just wanted to put it up on discussion for everybody to think about. Maybe we can finally make a final decision or be the best spot. So, I think the main reason we're looking at moving is so we can get rid of that problem. Yeah, and plus it's right in the middle of a residential area. Trying to keep them away from residential areas if possible. So how, how big of an area would this require to be used? Uh, a couple lots, three lots maybe. Because I was just wondering, you know, you have a lot of people coming in to the lunch? Like, put it in one end of the park? So we thought about that too, but at an intersection, it's awful busy in there. Yeah, the trucks is. get in and out, getting water be kind of hard. Yeah. Well, I can't believe that the county would want to kind of work a little bit with us. I mean, it benefits the county residents way more than it benefits the city. So I, mean, I don't, yeah. I can't understand that they wouldn't want to offer up something. Well, they did. They offered a piece of property they had in town. Huh? They offered it a piece of property they had in town. So is anybody looking at all the properties? Scott is close to it. We've, we've got a list of the properties that the county has ownership of. The, 
discussed both at the county level and Scott's looking into the locations. We'll have a list of those soon. I mean, we have a list, but he's going to go look and see if any of them are applicable for a water fill station. I know it's been mentioned that maybe the city just needs to get out of that business. Maybe try to get one of the car washes to start selling water, but I don't know. It's anywhere from twenty to twenty-five thousand a year in income. Yeah, we're probably going to need it shortly, aren't we? <laughs> you never want to give any income away. No, we're going to lose a lot. Of it. For that station is idle. You have the cost to construct it, and you're going to need a new coin operating machine. And yeah, one. Maybe want to do one with a credit card so they don't have to carry quarters and we don't have to transport quarters. Yeah. 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 We've got a whole list of possibilities. That's one of the reasons why we haven't done anything in the five to seven. We also got it, Dave. Nah. There's a perfect location right across from the county barn. We used to use it for storage in the, on the north side of the road. When I give the water line access to the county, they put that water line right down through there. So there's a, I think it's a six inch right across that property. Can we check the water out there? The that's a county shop and out in there. And if we open the hydrant, until we get more water than that in the town, it depletes all the water just upstream from that. There's, there's not enough water pressure out there. We don't have enough flow clear to the far end of the golf course in that, in that lower part. We checked that and it, as of right now, it won't work. If we had a new tank up on the hill over above the golf course, it would, but right now, there's not enough water. What's the pressure and volume at the county farm? Pressure was about 75 down there, and when they opened it up, it dropped it to zero. When they opened the hydrant above it, I mean, it just basically wasn't any. It's just not not enough flow. The water boys did that. I've got a copy back in City Hall, but there was like almost no water. And we looked at that first, because that's what the county wanted to do. Healthy ideas. <coughs> okay. Think about the water fill station. In the meantime, we'll take a look at a couple of these other ones that I haven't looked at either. Uh, do you approve of parade for December the 6th for the parade of lights? Shut down the portion of Highway 385. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion and questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Cattle on the airport. Is that yours, Craig? Yes, he did. Yes. At one time, we had a meeting with the lady from DNR, and she said there was to be no cattle on airport property. So why are we letting Pete Lean put cattle on airport property? It's not in the fenced area. It didn't have to be. Do you have anything in writing from the ENR that says you can't they do it? No, but I can give you the lady's name and your phone number if you like tomorrow morning. No, I'd like uh, public safety to go back to the lady and get a letter from her. Send it to the council. If you would have came to the meeting, you would have known, Carl. You were all invited. I got enough meetings to take care of myself. Oh, I see. Now you're too busy. What are, about when was that? When did that happen? Was that like this year or a year ago? About uh, a year ago. A year ago now. So if I look back in minutes, I might find something. Well, we had the meeting at City Hall. Yeah, public works meeting. No, it was well, just a special just meeting. meeting with being off. Stephanie was there actually. Harley should have been there. Maybe he took minutes. And if we do allow cattle out there, we get paid so much California. Right they're, now they're grazing on our property. Uh, right now we are. Right now we, we've got an agreement with Pete Lean that they can do the ag work out there until we have a final contract that be included in that. Yeah. Yeah. And they've done ag work since they took this over. We haven't got a dime from them. I asked Harley last week to uh, 
check to see if we've been paid yet from liens and uh, we have not. We have not. So I guess I, I'm a little curious on what your agreement is with when are they going to pay us? They've taken hay off there all summer. They took sedan grass off there that they had somebody plant. And we haven't got the dime off anything. Now they have cows on our property. Who's cows here? Gary Roman. I asked another question specifically about hunting. Who's going to retain those hunting rights? Did you uh, get an answer on that, Harley? I'm not. They're turning out to be a pretty good partner already, aren't they? I'll find out on the, on the <coughs> end of our things. I, I, I don't remember. I don't know what happened. I don't remember that. But I'll also find out on the payment. <coughs> I want to know how much they're getting for those cows in the property. I don't know if we know that. Well, you can ask them. Or early, yeah. We can ask them. Okay. population size and it would help us to generate uh, funds from the state because uh, right now we're in a small uh, we're less than 5,000 and so we get fewer funds. George that's not true you can't you can't annex enough around hot springs to become a class A city there's not enough people to annex in to get the numbers you're talking we're about so don't 5, 000, say that. We're less than 5,000 I just said we're less but you said that it would help us to get into a class A city. And it may help us to get No, in. it won't. Is there any of these people that have asked for voluntary, uh, to be volunteer, or uh, have they volunteered to be annexed into Hot Springs? Okay, I'll present the rest of my report and then I'll answer the question. Okay. Uh, the reason that we were uh, considering this is because we do offer public um, utilities and, and services to these areas. We don't receive any city taxes from them, and it would help us to um, offer more. If they have, if we had the ability to do more, we would try to do more. But this is still um, a study, and they are asking for recommendations. And, okay? Does that answer your question? Yes. No. What question do you want to Does anyone volunteer to be asked? Most generally. Yeah, we did have one, and um, I believe, I don't have their name right now, but we did have that. One person. One area. The Department of Labor also was contacted, and we um, would like to have a public service for our um, employees, our department heads, to avoid lawsuits and any of the areas that might be pertinent for applications and other information and they are offering it to anyone with a business that they may be interested but the department of labor has certain requirements that we should 
try to um, follow. And it's just a precautionary type training, but we would like to get most of our department heads trained. We had a request from the public to reintroduce the code of ethics for our council, to establish boundaries, and to well, evaluate our conduct during meetings. We had um, the Girls and Boys Club present um, a design, which I have here, if anybody would like to look at it, where their um, Southern Hill summer nights They'll have three of them in June, July, and August, and they give us the dates. They'll be Wednesday nights from 5.30 to 9. And um, they do plan to have beer and wine coolers, and they'll be selling t-shirts. It will be a free event. Free event. And the advertisement will follow. And that's all. Okay. Thanks. This is committee. Uh, nuisance committee met on October 23rd, and we had five properties to give consideration to. One of them being 1420 Grand Street, Sandra Burdett. Uh, on August 8, 2013, a courtesy notice was issued regarding inoperable and unlicensed vehicles in the backyard, a four by eight trailer with mattresses and household garbage, miscellaneous junk in the yard. Uh, on the 23rd, uh, after the committee meeting, one inoperable unlicensed vehicle was seen there, and one legally licensed vehicle remains in the backyard, but the 4x8 trailer is emptied but it's being loaded again. Some miscellaneous junk in the yard remains. Uh, another property, 341 North 5th Street, Tony Curtis. Uh, on July 23rd, uh, 2013, uh, courtesy city notice was issued regarding mowing grass, cleaning miscellaneous <coughs> junk in backyard, and repairing front steps. All of this was completed and Tony called for an inspection. Um, Scott said I am sending a note to him with regard to that. There still um, needs some more mowing in the back. Uh, the front steps are repaired. Some miscellaneous discarded household items are piled up next to the garage in the back. <coughs> in the alleyway uh, from the previous winter, and I would assume that Mr. Curtis is going to be removing that stuff. 1042 South River Street, Dolores Car Trust, uh, 216 East Elm Street, Wellington, Kansas, Ace Towing. On October 23rd, uh, structure is found to be vacant, junk mobile home, overgrown, grass weeds, miscellaneous junk, and vehicle parts, three unlicensed, inoperable vehicles. <coughs> A recommendation uh, from, the, from the nuisance committee is that we uh, proceed further with uh, action with regard to that property to get it cleaned up. 205 North 5th Street, Jim Road. Uh, on October 23rd, the weeds in the backyard, and he will be sent a courtesy notice. I noticed yesterday, since that's next to my house up on 5th Street, he was out there whacking weeds down and cleaning stuff up. 2102 Minicata Avenue, Kara Hagen. Uh, is, he, is Kara Hagen the owner? Do you know? Oh. Uh, we saw that there were trees over the sidewalk that needed to be cut back. Uh, 
junk and building materials on the porch, and I guess uh, Scott hung a door hanger courtesy on this on that property to let them know it needed to get cleaned up. I can't answer for Kara, but I do know she just purchased that. It was in rough shape prior to her even purchase that. There's, there's construction on the all over the porch. I suspect she's just moving more. I mean, yeah, I can't see her leaving her lips. No, no, I know she's planning on converting that. And I'm sure that she'll take some action with that courtesy. Yeah. No, this being on the door hanging. But it is a strong recommendation from the Nuisance Committee that we go further with the 1042 South River Street. That ace towing has been a mess over there for quite some time. And it really needs to get cleaned up. So we think that uh, we should have Mr. Seminar uh, issue a formal notice. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Public Works, Dwight, did you have anything else? Uh, we received many thank yous for the tree pickup after the storm. on the water fill station, the numerous areas we talked about, and we missed an item, and I don't know if we want to still do it, it's one more cleanup day, or cleanup week for this year. The motion when we passed it said we do six this year, but so far we've done four. I think we should at least do a half a week, maybe. According to Billy, the first week in December would be a good week, weather permitting, to do one more cleanup. And my, my recommendation for next year is to cut it back to four cleanups a year instead of six. I was a public Someone trim his trees and they drug them out by the curb, thinking the city would go ahead and oh. pick them up after they hired a tree trimmer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought those okay. ends looked pretty slick. Yeah, those were pretty they even were cut or uh, even breaks, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> the weekend, I didn't have their letters. I appreciate I want to talk to the rest of the council if we want to go ahead and do one more cleanup this year. Or, you know, if it's inclement weather, that's a pretty tough deal for city crews to run the garbage ditch on. It, it will be weather permitting. How was the uh, how was the showing on the last one? How many? 144 pickup loads. Most of them was the last day. Billy said that first day they had that eight pickup loads in. Well, let's work on it. If you get like a half a week, we'll see. If it will some show up the last day, we just do it. That'll be enough warning for everybody if we can discuss it the next meeting, right? I think a couple of days would probably be enough. You know, I think we, we've been doing this for a long time. You know, it, I understand we want to clean everything up, but at what cost do we got to keep the little money at this? I don't know. We, we need to do it every year, you know, spring and fall or something. But, you know, six full weeks, I. I don't know. We've, we've dumped a lot of money into this. I mean, we've gotten a lot cleaned up. I have to say. Yeah, and there's we're holding money back out of the landfill fee for this, so it's it's something we've got that. The citizens are paying for it. Yeah, we 
keep trying to tighten our belts too. All right. Well, that's what I just mentioned. Next year, I think we can cut it back to four. So we will have an announcement on cleanup days shortly. Is there any chance that uh, your committee could, uh, during your next meeting, uh, come together with a recommendation with regard to where the water part of the plant should be and what you want to do with it? I think the whole council should be involved, Carl, not just one person or two people. I mean, there there might be some well, good ideas. Well, go ahead. I, I'm just looking for somebody to give us a recommendation on where we should do this. Now you're in a hurry after about seven years? Well, I've only been on the council about seven years. Well, that's, I don't want to make a hasty decision now. I mean, no. When's Scott going to Report. Yeah. On the county. It sounded like there was a list of. Oh, yeah, we're, we're waiting on that a little bit, too. Just report to us next meeting. It sounded like most of the property oh, we got now is pretty, pretty unbuildable, so according to what he told us last night. He's going to go through the list. The commissioners, when they offer it, say something on what they They offer it. Okay. Thanks, Dwight. Thanks, Dwight. Thanks, Dwight. I missed under the administrative promotion. Georgia went to the Power Tech hearings. And I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't let you speak about that. Right. Don went to me not early. <laughs> anyway, we there were two hundred registered um, interveners, A and B. And I was in the B or B, and um, it lasted all day last Monday. I didn't stay for the whole day, and I was the last one at 5 p.m. Um, I gave a testimony, basically that was personal, but I did state I was a council member here in Hot Springs. So they did ask me um, some questions. They asked how much we paid for Evans Plunge, and I said 1.4 million. And how did we pay for it with municipal bonds? And then their question was, would our repayment fail if the water was polluted or gone? And I stated yes. My concern was um, in regards to the two fault lines at the uh, Dewey Burdock site. And they stated they'd have 40 wells dug and 150 acres. And I felt that was an area of concern for me, very big one. Um, and we weren't given any answers to any of that. But I did want to let our um, people here in Hot Springs know, Custer and Fall River counties have lost their voice on their control of their water due to the uh, Senate Bill 158. And more questions are arising every time we see a public hearing by PowerTech. So, I would like people to become involved. If you have a concern over your water use, if it should disappear or whatever, you are the ones that are going to be um, losing. Either you pay attention to what our bills are and like it the way they are, or you make sure that they don't pass. And we do have the ability to change this bill, and we could <coughs> actually have control over our water. Um, even if we charged a, doll or a penny a gallon, but they're going to use a lot of water. And whether it goes back into our aquifers or not, they're diluting them, uh, taking out the uranium, and then putting it back in with the solution, um, re-injecting it. So I think there's been a lot of good information in the Rapid City Journal. Everybody should be up to date on that. Um, quite a few of the issues, but I would suggest you would educate yourself a little bit more. Our water is our number one thing here in Hot Springs, and I think we need to protect it. Thanks, Drew. Public safety, Craig? We did not meet. We meet next Tuesday at 9. Okay. And social work? Huh? Monday. Monday's a holiday. 
Monday's Veterans Day, City Hall will be closed. I just got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I can go all of it. Go for recreation, Wes. We did not meet either. I believe our next meeting is Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, 515 at the library. Okay. Is this the last time you have them at the yeah. library? Do you just say you're going to start having them downtown? Yeah, I think we're going to move them down to City Hall after this. We're going to go ahead and have one more at the library, and then we're going to move them down towards the uh, City Hall. Are you meeting at the same time? Next month, though. Yeah, it would be at the same time all the time. Okay, thank you. Carly. Uh, a couple opportunities for the Mammoth Site fundraiser. They have a major gift campaign going on for anyone that's still interested in participating in that. Uh, you can buy a brick, you can buy a pick your seat in the new uh, Mammoth Site Learning Center science and culture support uh, for that. And also on uh, November 9th, it's the fall membership <coughs> drive uh, that's uh, being kicked off, and anyone interested in that is welcome to uh, either pick up an application from us, see the Mammoth site for uh, helping support them on the hill. Uh, we have two uh, notice for bids out. One was mentioned, we're rebidding on the airport hangar, uh, closing on November 21st. Uh, that's a Thursday for rebidding on the hangar. And we're also out for request for proposals for demolition of the buildings that we've vacated up at the maintenance shop at the golf course. Uh, option one is to, for someone to purchase and remove it, salvage, where they pay the city to come in and get it and take it off and, and uh, clean up the site. The other option is for demolition, disposable, and cleaning up. If we can't get anybody to buy the buildings to take them, we'll end up having to pay somebody or have the city take it down. But the proposals, so we can determine whether it's worth our time to do them as a city or whether we pay somebody else to, to get those out. And we do have a safety and loss control training conference in November uh, in Mitchell. Uh, if anybody from the council wishes to take that in and, and become active on the safety and loss control that our insurance company is sponsoring, you're welcome to do so on that. And I already mentioned City Hall will be closed on the 11th, so we'll please take note of that. Okay. Thank you. I've got a couple of things. Neighborhood Works has an invitation for a brunch up in Sturgis on November the 13th. November the 15th. If anybody wants to go, let me know. We can get to the invitation. I'll be RSVP. If nobody lets me know, then nobody will make it. But if you're interested in that, let me know. The other thing is the U.S. Mint and National Park Service has a beautiful quarters program. November the 5th, they're up at Mount Rushmore at an open house. And then November the 6th, they're in Custer at the uh, Crazy Horse up there. But they've got, they've got forms or places where they're going to be having the quarters out there, so I think you've got information on this in the packet, but that'd be something else to consider. It's not at the uh, Crazy Horses of the National Guard on Ring Custer. And that's all that I have. We've got a winter executive session for legal and personnel matters, so we're going to make an executive session. Motion to go into the second session. Leave one person out. All in favor say aye. Aye. All those no?